Jonathan Kane, welcome to Life Today. It's good to be here. So it's great to be here with you. For anybody who is either 12 years old or has lived on the other side of the earth, mm. you're the keyboard player mm -hmm. and primary songwriter for Journey, mm -hmm. the band. Mm -hmm. I played a little rhythm guitar, too. Did you play some guitar? Yes, sir. Yep. That's cool. So, well, okay, let's start with your, your faith because you're on a Christian show here, right? Right. When did you become a Christian? How, how much has faith been a well, part my, of your life? Well, my father was a very prayerful man, and uh, we were Catholic, and he led me to Jesus early. I would sit in church next to him, and he'd be on his knees, you know, tears would be coming down. And I asked him why he was crying, and he said, those are tears for Jesus. Um, um, I'm praying to, to, my, to my maker, to my Savior. <laughs> and I said, well, can I go with you somewhere? You know, and he's like, well, you need to call him. And you need to tell him that he's your savior. Um, and he just might show up. He just might come to you. And so at very early age, I would, you know, earnestly try to call out his name and, and tell him, bless me, you know, and, and that I loved him and how he covered my father and, and how he loved him. And so a couple of years later, you know, I said, Dad, is that kind of like a warm glow? You know, I'm getting ready to take my first communion, you know, and... Um, Putting that ho they put that host on my tongue, and I was having an out-of-body experience, you know. Oh, wow. I yeah. went into some, I don't know, I just drifted away. So, so you grew up in it? Mm. I was a choir boy. Yeah. So my first music was worship music, wow. and it was uh, Gregorian chants. So I, the, we, we sang in Latin, an octave higher than the monks did, you know. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Because right. we the had these did. little high voices. Yeah. Uh, and it was surreal, you know, answering the priest and being part of the ceremony. So I, I declared I wanted to be a priest, you know, told everybody. And, and of course, uh, our school, we had a terrible tragedy in 1958. My school burned down next to the church that we worshiped in. 92 children died, three oh, nuns. No. Yeah, it was a, one of the worst fires in uh, US history for a school. Wow. And Were you so there at the time? I, was, I watched it, yeah. Oh, I was just gosh. witnessing it, you know. So. I was struggling with post-traumatic syndrome. You know, sure. we, we, we didn't have any therapy. We, we were How old were you? Eight. Eight years old. And I kept looking at my watch, you know, saying, Jesus, you won't let this happen. Yeah. You know, not now, not yeah. here. 20 minutes, let everybody out. But, uh, you know, it happened. And so, you know, it was, you, you kind of had this abandoned thing, you know. I was, was up, were we abandoned that day, you know? And, yeah. That was kind of a question I put out of my mind, but it kind of froze me up a little bit, you know. And uh, I went through the motions, but something had been taken. The enemy took something out of that, away from me, you know. Yeah. And so um, but my father covered me in prayer and declared a musician over me. You're going to be a musician. God save you because of music. Oh, wow. So he uh, took me off to music school and music lessons and played accordion and piano and <laughs> um, started writing songs. And then he declared, uh, he was a prophet, you know, my son's going to be a famous songwriter and play for 10,000 people a night. And they'd laugh at him, you know, like, sure, Lanny, sure. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's true. And all the time, you know, I was going through music uh, school and then I had to make a choice between uh, going to conservatory music or going to Northwest for journalism. I was writing mm -hmm. for the newspaper and I chose the music. Um, I said, I got this far with it. And so my dad said, you keep playing, you keep writing and don't play that jazz and that blues stuff. That ain't going to make you any money. <laughs> the writing's going to make you money. So I listened to him, you know, and I kept writing songs. And, uh -huh. and, and, and that led me to uh, a decent solo career, um, short-lived. And next thing you know, I'm in the babies. Uh, and then being in the babies, they saw me. And then I was in Journey. So God whisked me away to this amazing super group. Yeah. They were selling millions of records. And were they already by the time you mm -hmm, joined? Mm -hmm. Double platinum. Oh, wow. They set me up my own house. I had my own rental car. But you wrote you wrote the big ones. I mean. Well, I, they, they wanted to change their sound. Is that what it Journey was? Journey did, yeah. And they said, we want you to help us make it modern, sound it, you know, change it. And I realized that lyrically they just needed to sing more of their fans, you know. Huh. And I was a big Bruce Springsteen fan, and he always would sing. Oh, yeah. Blue collar music. Yeah, you know? yeah, and I yeah. said, if we just put a little Springsteen in there, well, that's all we're going to need, you know? So don't stop believing. Yeah. There's a city city boy and a small town girl, you know, living yeah. in a lonely world. 
Funny thing about that one is there is no South Detroit. It's exactly. in Canada. But that, that <laughs> is the fantasy place. It's not ah, a real place. It's the ah, place where dreams come true. It's nice. kind of like the Yellow Brick Road. Nice. <laughs> that sounds I'm buying good. It. I'm buying it. it it's, where, it's where the midnight train anywhere. <laughs> that's, that's you got to have it someplace. What, uh, what's your favorite song, Journey song? It has to be that one. Yeah. Because it was inspired by my father. You know, mm. I was struggling in Hollywood, and he said, uh, I was questioning whether I should even stay, you know, because I was kept calling him for money, and bad things were happening, and I'm promises and rejection and promise and rejection. Finally, I'm, you know, should I come home? And my dad gave me advice, don't stop believing. Really? So I wrote it That in. was a line from your dad? Mm -hmm. And now we sing them in stadiums right, all the exactly, time. Right, exactly, exactly. So, awesome. so that is how prophetic my father was. He didn't know it was going to be a song. I didn't even know. So I carried that title around with me for about five years in this little lyric book I had. And there it was, and we needed one more song, and I said, this is it, right here. So I said, Holy Spirit, give me a, give me a melody to bring into Steve, you know, so I had his voice. God just gave me this melody, and I just came in with it. Okay, so history. me growing up, you know, son of an evangelist and, and a nice Southern Baptist church, we were told that your music was of, of the devil. We weren't right. supposed to listen to secular rock sure. music. How did it work for you being someone of faith mm -hmm. and your dad has such mm -hmm. a strong influence? Because mm -hmm. um, I've, I've seen some documentaries, not one on Journey, but was it the crazy rock and roll world? We were, were we were surrounded by it, but we didn't partake in it. Okay. Um, Steve uh, was from Fresno, and that's a farm town. <laughs> so a lot of innocent. He was like an innocent farm boy, really. Okay. Um, and my father, you know, had me convinced that drugs were the devil. So you guys were the goody two-shoes of the rock we world. We kind of were, time. you know. Yeah. We were like the nice. band that Rolling Stone liked to hate, you know. <laughs> and uh, they, they wrote miserable art reviews. I don't care when, what album we released, they would just tear our stuff up and say, <laughs> we were never going to matter, you know. And we were disposable corporate rock. And yeah. we were this and that. And, and now and, you're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And now we're in the Rock and Roll And I used to say... They said, but does it bother you, John, that they, they write this stuff? And I say, those that can do, those that can't, <laughs> review. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Boom. So what are you doing now? I mean, you guys still tour some? We are. I know we see We're you guys still around. pretty active. You know, uh, Steve left the band. Um, and then the book, you know, I talk about the whole, yep. anybody that wants to, to know about what happened. Don't stop believing That's it. the book. It's uh, it's not a tell-all book. Uh, it's <laughs> it's a story of brotherhood and trust, and uh, and God. Uh, That's cool. Keeping His hand on us all those years. So, when Steve left, um, there was an uncertainty. Yeah. That would journey. Yeah, for so, everybody, not just the band, but for all the fans. Would journey matter without Steve Perry? You know, and mm -hmm. and all. And then, Holy Spirit, said to me. The music is bigger than all of you. The music, John, is bigger than any one of you. And I and I believe I said, you so stay in there, hang in there, you know. So I don't know, my dad, don't stop believing. My dad's gone now, eh? mm. but I can only think three words, don't stop believing. <laughs> and that God had to be right, you know. And for anybody that's going through any uncertainty out there right now, mm -hmm. those are the hardest times because if there's darkness all around you. and. And you're just going forward because God's telling you, you know, and you don't know what's on the other side. And everybody's telling you you're out of your mind. You're crazy. What are you doing? You're, uh, you're in the wrong. You shouldn't be doing this. And yet God's saying, no, go, you know. And so we did. And we proved that we were right. And I worked really hard. And God sent us a guy that sounded kind of like Steve, Steve O'Jerry. He sounds a lot like Steve. Come know, on. Well, the first guy that came in. So, you know, in 19... 98. Okay. We had eight years of a guy, Steve, that came from uh, uh, New York, Brooklyn. Brooklyn Steve, uh, oh, two Steves, that's ironic that we get another Steve, and he leads the band, you know, out, and it's funny because we had to go back to the theaters and play the 3,000 seaters oh, and 2,000 yeah, okay. seaters for nothing. And, and we went out for a whole winter and made nothing, but the promoters all came. And we ended the tour in Detroit, the palace, in front of 15,000 people. Nice. And that's when it all shifted. 
and I knew we were on the right track. And the next summer, we were headlining with Foreigner in, in, the, in the Sheds for Live Nation. So, you know, we were right, and we believed that the music was bigger than any one of us, mm. and we still do. Mm -hmm. So um, what a blessing to have been part of those songs. You know, that's a foundation. Um, and I, I just made a covenant with God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to represent you know, this music, because the it band, comes from God. What do the other band members think of you? Well, you know, they think I'm a little Jesus freak, maybe, you know. Yeah, good. But I don't care. Um, and in meeting Paula, you know, I, I had this unworthiness about myself. You know, I made some mistakes, stumbled along the way, midlife crisis, you know. <laughs> all of us men go through. I was in a bad marriage. But we all make mistakes. You know, and I was in a bad up. marriage, and I was just not happy. Mm. And I met Paula on Southwest Airlines, <laughs> and I asked her. She told me I didn't believe she was a pastor. Cause, and yeah, I, right, I had to look at her right. <laughs> I had to look her up. You know, and I found that not only she's a superstar talk show host, too, you know, had the biggest <laughs> ministry in mega church. And, oh, my God. Um, but we shared so much together. And uh, my question to her was, is it possible for me to have a relationship with Christ like I had when I was eight? Because I, I just, I have a hunger in my heart. Mm -hmm. Don't know how to get back, you know. How do I get back? I was there. I was with him. Mm -hmm. We were one. The warm glow, you know. And uh, she said, you know, there's a weightiness about you, John. There's a Holy Ghost anointing on you. Mm -hmm. And you've come to the right place. Mm -hmm. Because I will tell you, you, you don't have to run anymore. You know, that you would... You're in the right place to repent and to reconnect and yeah. restore. Yeah. And she uh, gave me some scripture, and we stayed in touch. And, you know, I remember the blind lady that told me about Jesus again uh, gave me the good news. It is good. And news. I called her up, and I said, um, are you seeing anybody? <laughs> I said, I, I'm divorced now, and I, I need a, I just have a hunch that we might... You know, and so the rest is history. I, I married her in in Africa. What year was that? Uh, let's see. 2000, when was it? Gosh, you got to be 12, that. Yeah. 14. See, we've been married for, 14. 2014? 15. Yeah, we met each other. <laughs> I, didn't, two, I didn't mean throw you a curveball. No, I'm like, for four, <laughs> we've been married four years. So it's, so it's uh, 14, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 15. 15 would be four years. So, yeah, April 20. 25th. Uh, Set a reminder on your phone. 25th. Yeah. So, so yeah. And But we knew each other. I think we met each other in 2012. So when I was following her career, and, you know, yeah. she'd come and see me once in a while on a journey and yeah. wave. And I'm like, yeah, that's Paula. <laughs> um, but, I, you know, it was interesting. And I started, you know, getting back into the Bible and reading and finding places where my life, you know, I saw a lot of what God was doing, and, and I started writing this book, you know, and it really was therapy for me, you know, and it showed me how God had planned so much of my career out for yeah. me, you know, and how yeah. blessed I was. Yeah, he, he knew. At every step, you know, giving me a father that just like the most amazing father, yeah, you know, cool. and then when he passed, how the Holy Spirit came to me and said, it's all me, John, it's always been me through him, you know, mm. and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so... Um, I've always had this love, father love in my heart, you know, and, and I've been blessed for, you know, really blessed. Awesome. Uh, we could go on all night, but we won't. Okay. We're going to tell people to go get the book. Well, yeah, it's on Amazon and mm -hmm. we're selling, I, I sign copies, you know, at Jonathan Cain uh, Ministries. Uh, and this will minister to a lot of people um, that are going through stuff. Uh, there's a lot of conflict that I had to overcome. A lot of battles I had to, I had to battle. And, and God was there in the background, even though I wasn't, I would say this, this it's like God, I was sharing a suite with the Lord and he was paying all my bills and getting my room service and all that stuff. And I just wasn't knocking on the door saying thanks enough, you know? Hmm. And so when I saw Billy Graham say, you know, you can't be a part-time Christian, hmm. you know, you have to all be in all, all in. He would always say, you know, yeah. there's no such thing as all in. You know, and that's what I learned um, about faith, that, that it has to be a full surrender. 
Yeah, otherwise it tears you back and forth. You don't no, and then you're just going this way, that way, going this way. Yeah, going this it way. just doesn't work. No, and, yeah. and I think that's what I did is I just shored up and it became disciplined and, and found, you know, uh, with Paula, the, the discipline to, to maintain a steady ship. Yeah. You yeah. know, and now I'm writing worship music, you know. I'm on my third worship album. I'm recording a brand new single uh, with Michael Tate called Wonder of Wonders for Christmas. I saw a little promo mm -hmm. thing on that. Yeah, That's so we're going to be putting cool. that out this yeah. uh, this Christmas. I I put a Christmas album I called Unsung Noel with 10 original Christmas songs for Jesus on it. Um, I'm still super proud of. And uh, Unsung Noel. So I just continue to carry on. I'm leading worship at church and having a time. Are you really? Mm -hmm. That'd be fun. Yeah, I, I mean, am. I work yeah. with a team. And Who's your worship leader? The guy from Journey. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> you know, that'll work. That's right. Hey, that was a little pitchy. Right? <laughs> Doing Michael Jackson. Yeah. Thanks for coming by. All right, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it.